What's going on? Mm-hmm. We got another episode of the Creative Spotlight presented by Lane Brody. And today our star is an old, old friend. One of my oldest probably you've seen on the Creative Spotlight. Uh, he grew up in my neighborhood with me. He's a poet. He's amazing with words. And he's come here and he's got some some really powerful words and uh, a story that he wants to shed some light on. So I'm really excited. But uh, before we get into all of that, I want to dive into, you know, like I said, we we grew up in the same neighborhood. This is David Brackett. How you feeling? I'm feeling amazing, bro. I'm you feeling blessed. good? Yeah, for sure. That's what's up. We uh we grew up in PG County. Uh, we went to the same elementary school. That was the last time we went to the same school together, uh, Montpelier. What memories do you have of that? How was that for you? <laughs> that was that was a good experience for me, honestly. Nah, it was an amazing experience. Like Halloween would come around, we would go all around the neighborhoods and shit. Uh, we were just wild. We were jumping kids. <laughs> like, oh You're right. God. We were we were hooligans. Um, that definitely was like, it was hectic. It was just chaotic, but it was so fun, and uh, it was a lot. It was a lot. Let me not rub my pants. Sorry about that, but it was a lot. It was um, and then I eventually went to like Chapelgate. So. In sixth grade, uh, and that was different. That was a lot yeah. different. There was nobody getting jumped, running around. Uh, wasn't as much like you know. Ah, it was rumors. It was pretty. It was still pretty crazy, but it wasn't. It wasn't as physical, or you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. What'd you do in sixth grade? I, I went to Chapel Where'd you go? I was still at Montpelier, bro. Remember they were still. Oh like, yeah. Like yeah. one through six, and so. Um, Stick, uh, sticked it out there for another year. Then I went to Eisenhower. And at Eisenhower, I don't know. The, it was just Eisenhower. I don't know why in middle school I just felt like I was the most grown person on earth. Oh, you've so, always been like mature? I think I, I do remember that. I, I just know I've always hung out with people that were like older than me. So That's just, true. I, I'll say that you've, you've always had like a very mature um, personality for sure. I've always got that vibe from you. Um, definitely. Uh, and then after Eisenhower, you went to Laurel. Yeah, I went to Laurel. Yeah, I definitely wish I could have went to Laurel, especially to play basketball. Uh, I played like pickup with a couple of the guys there and whatnot. And it just seemed like it would have been really fun. How'd you like Laurel High School? Laurel was, uh, it was funny. You have to get really adapted to Laurel. Um, but I thought, um, it was cool. I was in drama club. I played sports. Um, it was... (laughs) It was really fun. A lot of really down to earth people. Drama club. Yeah. You were acting. Yeah, I took. I was in theater for three years. What play was you in? What play, man? Uh, Arsenic and Old Lace. We were supposed to do Hairspray too, but they canceled it. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. I was in one play. Uh, it was like, it was a random situation. The theater teacher. I guess that's what I'll call it for now. I don't. I can't. I don't know what the word is. But um. She just walked up to me in the hallway and was like, hey, uh, you're like a really loud kid and a lot of people know you. You're really popular. Yeah, that's what she said. I've always been this way. Um, she was like, and you're on the basketball team and I think it would help us bring in like a different audience. It was super smart. And I was just like, sure. Like I've never been in a play. I was a senior, I think. I'm pretty sure I was a senior, yeah. So I was just like, let's do it. So me and another senior who, uh, it was his first year on the basketball team actually. It was real fun. We just got up there and we were goofing off, but she didn't mind. She just let us be ourselves. And literally, we thought at some point she was going to tighten up on us. But no, it was just like fun from the jump. I wish I would have did more of that. No, I was, I was always, uh, I would always wonder that, like, after we stopped going to school together. I was like, I wonder if he, like, really has fun at school. Like, I know you play basketball and everything with, like, the Frierson's and everybody. Like, and I knew that was lit. Mm-hmm. At but first. I was, like, I, I really wondered how... Like Chapelgate, just the school life was. At first, it was it was it was an adjustment because obviously it's the you go from a school with mostly people that look look like you, and then you go to a school where you don't look like everyone. But I want to say that got that got out of the way pretty quick, and you start as a kid, especially. I mean, you kind of like start to these are your friends now. Um, you don't think about race too much until like certain things come up and it kind of like made me aware over the years. And that's just where I became aware around that crowd. So, I mean, yeah, it probably would have been cooler. I think this is why one of the reasons I would have wanted to go to Laurel 
just to get these uh, cultural experiences there rather than Chapelgate because it's it's all different. Um, it's all different. But it definitely was fun. Definitely was fun. Um, after Laurel, you you graduated. <clears throat> yeah, graduated twenty fifteen. Mm-hmm. And you went to. I went to Troy same. University. I graduated twenty fifteen. Shout out to everyone who graduated in twenty fifteen class fifteen. Yeah. You said Troy. Yeah, I went to Troy University. A couple like that's in uh, Alabama. Alabama. Troy, Alabama. Crun- very country town. Very rural. Um, Was that racist? I'm just gonna come out and ask. Yeah, I think one of the last few. It's a weird fact, but one of the last few recorded lynchings were uh, in a town like right next to Troy. Omg! Omg! In like the '50s or something, or the '60s or something. That's crazy. <sighs> yeah. So you like that though? Nah, uh, not really. Good. I, <laughs> they were just like really behind on a lot of things. And how long were you there? You graduated from there? Or? Nah, I went there for a year, and then he stepped. <laughs> yeah, then I transferred to the you know, to the to the state school. Went to the University of Alabama. Alabama, roll tide, roll. You see Nick yeah. Saban? Nah, I've never seen Nick Saban in person. I've seen Tua. You know what I'm saying? Right after he threw the game winning pass. You that think you cool. could beat Nick Saban in a wrestling match? I would dog me too. I would dog me. I just dog playing. <laughs> He's old ass. Oklahoma drill. You and Nick Saban. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Nick though. He's a legend. Um, what was that like though? Uh, um, Alabama. What was that like? That was actually amazing. Like uh, crazy nights, man. You know, I driving drunk. Don't die. Don't drive drunk. But uh, definitely yes. don't. Do not drive drunk. Drink just responsibly. Experiences, man. Just <laughs> dumb decisions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's college. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first college man. football game like at Alabama? I know you remember that. You know what's funny, bro? You black? You don't. Where are Hoopers, bro? Like, oh, yeah? Or Hoopers. I only went to one Alabama game, but I went to probably like 15 Alabama basketball games. We had Colin Sexton, and like three. John Petty. Oh my gosh, I'm man. A Colin I'm Sexton. A, I'm a basketball head, bro. Like, wow. It's like cool seeing Najee Harris and everybody on there. Like, y'all are legends and I fuck with y'all. But I'm like, you know, I just fuck with basketball. Colin Sexton, you hear him? We mm-hmm. fuck with you. Send this man a jersey. He gets to Kyra Lewis. Uh, he got drafted by the Pelicans. He's nice. Like, be hit to Kyra. Do you ever meet these guys just walking around campus, or was it? It was probably a huge campus. It was a huge campus. Um, but I would see them. Mm-hmm. I'd see. I'd say I see like everybody at least once. That's lit. That's lit. Yeah. How did uh? It's kind of a swing, but you haven't graduated yet, right? No, I graduated in May. In May? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Cool. Wild cool. COVID was happening. Wild COVID was happening. Yeah. How did that affect the the end? How was that graduating? That with? was crazy. Uh, How was graduating with COVID before you dive into anything else? Yeah. Graduating during COVID was just... Uh, was it virtual? Yes. Oh, wow. It was weird. A lot of my teachers just were like really cool about it. They just said, you know, just show up to class and we're going to talk. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how a lot of my classes ended. And... Um, Nothing, just a few tests, but nothing crazy. It but you didn't like walk smooth. across a stage or anything like that? Nah, I could have, but... <laughs> they gave the option? Yeah, they gave me the option and I like, I was like, yes, but... And a mask or no? Yeah, we had to wear a mask, but... Okay, that's cool then. That's cool. Yeah. That's all right. True, true. How else did uh, COVID impact? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, he's got something to say. Nah, COVID impacted me. In, a, in an amazing way, like COVID was probably the best thing that happened to me in 2020 because mm-hmm. I had uh, started dealing with some health issues in January. I had started, like, I just, one day I woke up and started feeling like I was having strokes mm-hmm. and uh, was feeling electric shocks, all this crazy shit on my head. And uh, for like 10 months, bro, I was just going to the doctor back and forth, seeing di- different doctors getting diagnosed with like different things. Mm-hmm. And I eventually came back up here and um, went to Walter Reed and I met with this. Every time they diagnosed you with a different thing, did they like give you some sort of medicine or did they just kind of? Yeah, they like, uh, they would call it different things, but it was really just like the same couple of medicines. It was really just uh, painkillers mm. and 
one thing called like gabapentin. So it's like for the electric shocks. That's what it was for. Electric shocks. And uh, yeah, bro. Um, it was wild. <laughs> I came up here, got diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Then I started doing some research on it. After that, uh, I just didn't want to like accept it. But it was like a blessing in disguise that I did go for it. I found some good information and now I'm like, uh, found a doctor and uh, she used her treatment on me and it's like working. Like I feel like 100% healthy. So it was, it was fibromyalgia? Yeah, it's like this chronic pain condition where you just feel pain all over, all throughout your body. Hmm. So all how the they, time. How like they finally, pain. how'd you finally figure that out? How many uh, doctors did it take? How long did it take? How many months? It took, I got diagnosed the last day in August. So like August 31st. And then um, I was just on the fibromyalgia tip for like a month. And then I started doing my wow. own research and I found a new doctor in like the beginning of October. And uh, Your own research? Yeah. Like all them articles on Google, like just. After <laughs> after they, they gave you all these wrong, wrong diagnoses or whatever. <laughs> Diagnoses. Yeah. Like, after they gave you all these wrong ideas, uh, you were like, "Nah, this can't be it." You start, you start going online. Yeah, yeah. Just looking at YouTube, people's fibro fibromyalgia stories, talking about how they're always in pain. This, I was like, "This isn't like." There's got to be some way you can just heal yourself. I've always mm -hmm. heard that. You can Other than the medicine, yeah, that they kept giving you. Yeah, that you could just heal heal yourself holistically. So I started really getting into that and just searching things, googling things. I didn't want to accept it. And I stumbled upon this uh, this great article with like 116 pages, a couple different other pages. <laughs> <laughs> it was and, like a deep cut. Yeah. Then I uh, started doing the research. It was talking about. Uh, and no, your your doctor never recommended any of this, huh? No, nah, I had to find it on my own. He said, <laughs> he said, just chill out for like a year. We're gonna see each other every other three months. So I wasn't going to be doing anything. I was going to be on disability. Wow. Uh, but, hmm. yeah. So what kind of treatment did they end up uh, doing that they found was effective to get rid of? Do you still feel electro electric shocks? Nah, I don't feel the shocks, but I still feel, like, my bones moving. Even, like, the bones on my head. Wow. It's, oh, it's like... Ah, that hurts. Crazy. Yeah. You just, like, ignore it, or do you kind of, like... Do you wish? It's, like, crazy. Can I notice if I just stared at you? <laughs> yeah. Like, sometimes yeah. I just, like, tap myself mm -hmm. because it's, like, still a little stiff. But, mm -hmm. nah, when I, I remember smoking before, like, when I was actually going through this. Like, I couldn't even smoke anymore type shit because it would make the electric shocks go wow. way, way, like, more. So it was just OD. Wow. You were telling me that they did some uh, some sort of percussion thing. Yeah, so it's this thing called uh, Atlas Orthogonal uh, Chiropractor Treatment. And, um, and this is what you found in your own research. The doctor never said that crazy word that you just said. Nah. Wow. So I just was just BSing one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> found it. Um, and what I first remember seeing is like, you know, have you ever seen like a slinky? And how you can stand it up and it'll stand straight up. Mm -hmm. It's it was uh it was like an like an instrument like that, and so uh, hmm. not an instrument like that, but that's kind of how your body is constructed. Yeah, your spine. Yeah. Yeah. So and and if one's here and one's here, it's gonna eventually get into a straight line. Yeah. And yeah. What yeah, happens yeah. with this is people don't understand, but there's C one, which is your first vertebrae. Uh, that can get, become misaligned, and when uh, the top of something is misaligned, normally you see everything, the rest of your body compensates for it. Mm -hmm. So if you're like this, your body's going to move exactly like how your arm does. Uh, so it's and that's much, what was happening to you. Yeah, things were getting out of place. And, and how they realign that? <laughs> <laughs> this instrument. It was like a pendulum, like what Spencer made on iCarly. That was that one time <laughs> that you could just swing back and forth type mm -hmm. shit. Uh, they use one of them joints, and they use a lot of math with this treatment. So they get it to hit the the atlas bone, which only weighs a couple of ounces. That's why they use this little instrument. But um, hmm. they use that precise. And, mm -hmm, they just it's you, it's literally a flick, bro. Like a little flick. They use it on babies and infants. Mm -hmm. And 
it just realigns your body all the way back up and your body just naturally begins to heal your, heal itself because the brain stem and the spinal cord all become uh, perfectly aligned again. That's crazy. And this yeah. all happened, you just started this whole journey overnight. You wake up one day and you're just like, what's going on? Am I having yeah. a stroke? It was one of those crazy stories. They say, what did your roommate do when you, was he there? When you like wake up and you're like, yo, I need help. My roommate was wild, bro. Like, it was more so just a cool thing. Like, I was, like, really thugging it, like, on some man shit. Like, just, mm-hmm. you know, not even telling anybody who wasn't, like, a close friend type shit. Mm-hmm. So I was, like, it was weird because I I thought I was, like, you know, I had a pretty good reputation on campus. So, I like, that, that semester was weird, the beginning, when I started to feel it. It just started to feel like people kind of act like I was falling off or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, that was weird. Interesting. Yeah. Because you kind of weren't able to. I wasn't to, myself. Yeah. You know? Wow. People weren't rallying around you. Usually, yeah. I would definitely expect people to rally around a friend, you know, in that time of need. That's definitely what I would, uh, especially with everything else going on in 2020. I mean, you're, mm-hmm. you're dealing with that. And then we have all the racial things going on and... And everything. What's man? What, 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 how's your twenty twenty been? My twenty twenty dealing with your health and obviously everything in the world. I say it's all been a blessing in disguise. Honestly, like I'm good now. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I just remember sitting in those times. Like just I got spiritual. Like mm-hmm. I got into the law of attraction. Um, I just got into being a student of life and not just you know somebody just walking around. Just bumping into things, trying to find things to do, but mm-hmm. I felt like I, I know I just got purpose from it all. Appreciation for life. It probably yeah. was scary. I mean, electronic shocks. I've like, never felt that. I was the type of nigga who didn't even wasn't even trying to make their bed for real. Now every day I get up, I'm making my bed because I was just sitting in there one day while this mm-hmm. was all going on. I'm like, I can't even get out this motherfucker. Man, you just. Crazy. That's crazy. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you're just laying in bed. You couldn't go to any of the um, protests or anything like nah, that. Nah, but I was happy that everybody was like going out there. All the like, yeah, we went out early. <laughs> Acting like it was GTA in the targets. And, uh, oh man, no, that that uh, was funny. Uh, yeah. Man, that's crazy. What else? Um, got you over that? I'm, I'm pretty sure like poetry helped you get over some of the. Things yeah. going on in 2020. It's funny. Music helped me. <laughs> you know, just creating and whatnot. Nah, bro. Um, poetry was something I got into more so after everything had stopped. Like, just uh, actually being able to just sit down and just process what's all going on. Like, mm-hmm. all the different emotions that I was feeling at that time. Yeah. I finally get to just let loose. So It was like, like an outlet. <laughs> now I just, like... <laughs> it was funny because I was just writing on uh, like computer papers and everything mm-hmm. like that. And then, you know, just doing that whole thing. And but now I'm kind of trying to get into carrying a journal around and everything like that. Yeah, always you having it in the me. car. You were always telling doing me. that. So, uh, yeah, bro. It just <laughs> it got me into just wanting to always get my thoughts down. You're you know? telling me I need to start writing some stuff down. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Who are some of your inspirations for uh, poetry? inspirations for poetry i definitely just say or music it's, it's more so like yeah i was gonna say like in the music spot mm-hmm. it's like i thought tupac was really dope and just always seeing like uh how he starts the first bar in a song and it's just like i can remember him talking about poetry in high school and everything like that i'm like that, all that comes from like a foundation mm-hmm. and i was just like damn like yo i was like <laughs> there's so much emotion that comes with it and you can just take it so many different places like when Tay K's rapping. Like Tay K <laughs> sounds like a little serial killing poet. Like he's just dope. But he's just really just he's a poet when he's on the mic. I just like that. Like people who can really just flow. So right, right. those are kind of like some of my inspirations. They really just get on there and say what they gotta say. Their right. life, their real life. I I hear you, I hear you. Tupac or Biggie. Tupac or Biggie. Real quick. I like, Tupac. All right, all right, cool. All right, don't look at my screen, all right? We're going to do something fun. You ready? Yeah. I'm going to ask you the first word that comes to mind. The first what? The first word, or you can say a phrase, just the first thought that comes to mind when I say. Okay. You ready? 
Yeah. All right, don't look. <laughs> PG County. Kevin Durant. Community. Uh, community college. <laughs> Love. Love. Um, I think of Alabama Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Drake versus Hove. Drake versus Hove. I think about in a versus battle. I think Drake is would smash him. Unselfishness. The opposite of me right <laughs> now for getting better. That's honest, man. I appreciate that. Brother. Brother. Uh, I think about everybody kind of like in the room as far as like Aunt and you. And I thought of Patrick. I thought of my brother. Like Michael down the street. Like playing basketball. I, that's what I thought of. Nah, that's tough, man. That was my last one. Yeah. That's tough, bro. That was honest. I like that. I like that. That might have. That was nice. That was nice. Um, So just to wrap all this up. What are some things that you think we could do to bring like positivity into 2021? Some light to find light in the darkness in a sense. I know poetry, maybe you could write some poems or you can do some content about how hard it was to find the diagnosis or to get the proper, not diagnosis, but the proper treatment and even the right diagnosis, but, uh, Finding the proper treatment rather than just getting told like, oh, here's some medicine, here's some medicine, or just sit, just sit, keep coming to me and giving me your money rather yeah. than going and getting some treatment that you really need the solution. Um, but yeah, just what are some ideas you think that we could use or some things we can do to bring some positivity? Bring some positivity. Um, I think uh, a lot more of everybody in society just holding each other accountable. Mm -hmm. To just uh, be the best version of themselves. To, you know, uh, implement integrity. Anything that, you know, character traits that would just make everybody a better person. Yeah. But, you know, um, that's really what I think of. Just everybody nah, in that's the world huge. trying to just using their, sense, using their energy to just make the next person better. The next person better. The next person better. That's huge, man. That's definitely going to be like, that. that's what you need. You got to be honest with each other and call each other out. Don't hold back. Don't be honest with yourself. You know, um, hold other people accountable. Hold yourself accountable. And I think that's why uh, I'm glad you're around. You know what I mean? I'm glad we're friends. I'm glad that you're there to hold me accountable and to make sure that I'm getting better and I'll do the same. And hopefully we can come back on the show and do it again, man. This was fun. Nah, for real. Sure. You uh, you stay healthy. Nah, stay for healthy sure. for sure. Thank you, thank you.